Joshua chapter 3, verse 3, and then we'll skip to 5 and 15 through 17. We've been kind of in this area the last couple of weeks. Joshua chapter 3, verse 3, and they commanded the people saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Remove from your place and go after it. Your place might be the lyrics to that song. <laughs> your place might be your comfort zone. Your place might be your favorite seat in the church house. Your place might be your favorite row. Your place might be that nice, cushy, lazy boy. Remove from your place and go after it. Verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. In other words, ain't nobody going to do it for you. You need to sanctify yourself. You need to purify yourself. You need to cleanse yourself. You need to um, discipline yourself. All those things fall into sanctification. Cleansing, washing, purification. There's a level the Spirit does, but then there's a level the Spirit's waiting on you to do. And that's why Joshua told them, the Lord ain't going to sanctify you today. You need to sanctify yourself. And if you're willing to sanctify yourself, then on the morrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Joshua 3, verse 15. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city. Adam, that is beside Zerton, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho, and the priest that bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. And the complete Jewish Bible, jo Joshua 3 and 3 says, When you see the ark for the covenant of Adonai your God and the priest who are Levites carrying it, you are to leave your position and follow it. Leave your position and follow it. And today I just want to minister on this subject, follow it. Follow it. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy, Jesus. We glorify your name in this place. We want your perfect will done today. Father, we cast down every evil imagination from among us. We remove every distraction in the name of the Lord Jesus. We sanctify ourselves, oh God, today. And we expect to follow the moving of your spirit that there might be miracles done among us, Jesus. We glorify you. Have your liberty in this house. Have your freedom in this house. We worship you today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus. During this time in your Bible, Israel was under new leadership. And this would be a sign to the people that God was now with Joshua as he had been with Moses. In other words, I need you, my people, to understand regardless of who's leading you, I am still your God. And I will anoint and I will appoint men to lead you, but I am your God. 
The word was, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest the Levites bearing it, then ye shall leave your position and follow it. Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow he will do wonders among you. They left their tents and followed, and when the Levites stepped into Jordan, when their feet dipped into the water, just barely broke the surface, the waters of Jordan rose up and became walls, and the ground beneath their feet became dry for them to cross over into Jericho. The Lord had parted the Red Sea for Moses and the people to walk on dry ground, and the Lord said, I'm going to do the same thing all over again with Jordan, but this time it's Joshua leading. But I'm still the same God. I still part waters. I can still do the miraculous. Follow me. The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of the Lord. It represented the housing or the Spirit of God. And when it moved, that meant that the Spirit of God was moving. And if we want to see the miraculous again, we must learn to follow the presence of the Lord. we got to learn to follow the moving of the Spirit. When you see the Spirit of the Lord begin to move upon His people, remove from your place whatever you're doing, whatever is yours, get out of yourself, leave your position and follow it. In other words, get out of your seat and go after it. Didn't come here to be entertained by you today. I didn't come here to entertain you today. What I came to do was follow the Spirit of God. I came to seek His face. We came to preach His Word. We came to move in music and worship. We came to pray. We came to just get in the presence of God and be a part of whatever He's doing today. It would be a shame if He moved to the right and we were stuck in the left. And the very purpose of coming today, we miss it. We miss it. If His presence shows up in worship, intensify your worship. If His presence is falling on those with their hands lifted, it's a good idea for you to lift your hands. If His presence is moving on those who stepped out into the aisle, then maybe it would be a good idea for us to get in the aisle too. If it's moving on those that are dancing, begin to dance. On those that are clapping, clap your hands with all your might. On those that are in the front row, get out of your seat and get to the front row. If he's on the left or on the right and the Spirit is moving, oh, if we would begin to follow after the Spirit, then we would see the miraculous. If His presence shows up during preaching, follow it and preach with the preacher. If His presence shows up at altar call, get out of your seat. Come out of your position and follow it to the altar. If His presence is showing up in pre-service prayer, get out of your lazy boy and get to the house of God early so the Lord can be seen and the Lord can move. To, but we didn't know the saying, the early bird is the one who catches the worm. If we could catch fire in the pre-service prayer, we might have a miracle before the first song broke out. We might have a miracle before the word was ever preached. But we've got to find the Spirit moving and follow it. Where are you at, Lord? Where are you going, Lord? we got to get out of our comfort zone and go after it. We've got to learn to follow it wherever it's moving. Seek Him while He may be found. In Joshua 3 and 3, another focal point is the fact that it was the priest, the Levites, bearing it. He said, Then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. That word bearing by the priest is the word nasaw. It means to lift, to carry, to uphold, or to magnify. And when I charge in here and I walk up to the front, and, 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 and before I begin to preach or minister, sometimes it's a song or two even before we get up here, what are you doing, pastor? I'm trying to follow their example. I'm trying to be the priest. What are you doing? I'm trying to bear the presence of the Lord. I'm trying to find that window he was moving in. I'm trying to find that place where he was at. What song did he really move the most in? Did we miss something over here? What are you doing? I'm trying to bear the presence. I'm trying to carry. 
carry the presence. I'm trying to magnify the presence of the Lord in this place. And if i got to go back a step or two or a song or three, let's find it. Let's dip into it and let's stay where the presence of the Lord is. we got to follow it. When we see it move, we need to move with it. In Romans 8, chapter 13, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. <laughs> Let the Spirit lead, but make sure you're following it. Let the sons and the daughters of God follow it. In Galatians 5 and 25, it says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we're going to live in the Spirit, we might as well learn to walk in the Spirit. You can't walk in the Spirit if you ain't prayed in two weeks. (laughs) Ain't going to happen. It's very difficult sometimes to walk in the Spirit if you ain't prayed today. You got to drag that flesh to an altar somewhere. You got to make it bend down and bow over and get a hold of the presence of God and let the Spirit of God stir up in you so it can lead. There are examples in the book of Acts and other places where following the Spirit took place outside the church house. It's one thing for us to follow the Spirit in the church house, and and, and in our example, they were not in a building. The ark was moving outside the building. And so they were following the moving of the ark in the atmosphere where the earth was, where the wind blew, where the sun was hot. The Lord was still moving. And we've got to change our mindset to think that I can't prophesy to somebody if I'm not in the church house wrong. I can't sing a song if I'm not, if I don't have the music backing me up wrong. I've even told you you can sing the wrong words to the song. Because I was trying to follow after the Spirit. Sometimes it'll break out when you least expect it. In the most least expected places. But when it breaks out, you ought to shift your whole attention to... Well, well, all he was doing was taking up the offering and the Spirit broke out. Follow it. All he was doing was taking up prayer requests and the Spirit broke out. Follow it. Well, he was preaching the Word and he didn't even finish and the Holy Ghost fell. Follow it. We got to learn to follow the Spirit. There's not a lot in there, but there's a little bit in there. Somebody wants to go pick that up. It's okay. Joshua said, the priest... We're bearing it. And when you see the priest bearing it, go after it. There have been times in services where the Spirit will move. And uh, I'm trying to follow it. And and I'll step over this way and might start to head toward this side of the congregation. And the Spirit said, nope. So I'll pray a little bit, move over. Nope. Pray a little bit. Well, nope. Go back up here again. And the song play or somebody do something, and then the Spirit will then usher me. Everything comes in seasons and times, but you need to constantly in your spirit have your radar up going, where are you at, Jesus? And where do you want me to be? Because I feel like no matter where I am, if you ain't there, I don't want to be there. Now, the Spirit of God is in you if you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But when we're talking about the presence of the Lord, it's like when that spirit manifests. When the spirit manifests, you recognize, oh, it ain't just in me operate, but it's in them operating. And, 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 and lo and behold, there's two or three people over here all weeping and everywhere else is dry. Guess what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm going to follow after where the spirit is and not be so complacent in my seat. And I'm going to pick up my wallet. Praise the Lord. So here's my point in all this. If you get so comfortable where you are, you're not going to grow. You're going to miss an assignment. You're going to miss an alignment. I want to see the miraculous. Well, then you have to be present where there is a need 
and there is a drawing and moving of the Spirit. And when it's all happening, you've got to be willing to go out of your place and follow it. Well, I, I'm comfortable. I, I'm not really a worshiper. I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of an introvert, and I don't get very expressive. And, 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 and That's fine with everything else. But when the Spirit is moving, come out of it. You've got to come out of your place. Come out of your norm. Come out of your comfort zone and follow it. If you want to see the miraculous, you've got to get into a routine of spirit moves, I follow. Spirit moves, I follow. You need to be like the, like we joke about squirrel. You're supposed to be doing this or that and the other. Squirrel. squirrel. And you get distracted. Well, if anything's going to distract you, let it be the Spirit of God that distracts you. Let it distract you from your trouble. Let it distract you from your pain. Let it distract you from your trial. Let it distract you from whatever you're doing in routine. Let the Spirit distract you and you move where it is. And He'll do wonders among you. He'll do wonders among you. Following the Spirit outside the building, Acts chapter 11, verses 11 through 17. I'm going to slow down to teacher mode for a moment. Behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me, and the Spirit bade me go with them. Nothing doubting. This is Peter relaying the story of how it came about that he went to Cornelius' house when the Spirit was poured out. He said, the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and when we entered into the man's house, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou, thou and thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with the water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much, as, for as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? The Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. That word bade is the word epo, and it means to, he was called, he was commanded, or he was told. The Spirit told me, go with them. Nothing doubting. Would the devil tell you to witness to somebody? Would the devil tell you to pray for somebody? Would the devil tell you to uh, give to somebody? Would the devil tell you to join hands with a worshiper and worship together? It's time to follow the Spirit. Nothing doubting. When you get past your ego, your position, your place, your comfort zone, when you get past the worrying about whether I'm going to step out here and the Lord ain't going to respond, when you finally get past your, well, I, I hear the Lord tell me to go pray for him, but what if nothing happens and I mess something up? Well, I, I hear the Lord drawing me to the front, but what if I'm the only one that goes up there? If you would learn to follow the Spirit, He said He would do wonders among you. If the Spirit is baiting you, if the Spirit is telling you, if the Spirit is leading you, if the Spirit is drawing you, if the Spirit is dropping things in your spirit to do, then stop doubting and do it. And the sooner we can collectively as a body stop doubting and start doing, then we can see the miraculous among us. Then we can see the Spirit do what He wants to do. Uh, in Acts chapter 18, we see, another, we see another example of the Spirit leading a certain way or doing a certain thing. It says, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed 
in the Spirit. He was pressed. What does that mean? He was, he was compelled. He was nearly pushed. The Spirit was... Mm. And testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they op- opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment, said unto them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. The Spirit pushed him. Now, now you be Paul for a moment. The Spirit pressed him. Preach to him, Jesus. Tell him who I am. Preach it. And he does what the Spirit says do. And nobody gets the Holy Ghost. Nobody gets baptized. Nobody follows him to the water. Nobody repents. In fact, they reject him. And they oppose themselves and they blaspheme. Now, if it was some of us and nothing happened, we would quit. I just told me, dude, Jesus had done that. But he left me all out there by myself. You didn't help me none. What did I do to deserve that? But he shook his raiment. Why? Because he had obeyed the Holy Ghost. He did exactly what the Spirit pressed him to do and said unto them, this ain't about me. Your blood be upon your heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. I came to you because the Spirit pressed me to. I didn't come to you because I wanted to. I didn't come to you because I was looking forward to you running me out of another synagogue. But I came to you because the Spirit led me to, the Spirit bade me to, the Spirit told me to, the Spirit pressed me to. And you spoke what the Spirit said. Now you get to take your hands off of it and not worry about what happens. You did what you were supposed to do. So if you feel the drawing to the altar and the thought comes, well, what if you're the only one? It don't matter. The Spirit's pulling me to the altar. If the Lord tells me to lift my voice and speak in tongues really loud, if I feel that gift of tongues come, what if I miss it? It don't matter. Yield to it. Follow it. Give it. And then let what happens, happen. The first time I ever stepped out in gift of tongues interpretation, there was like 12 people in the room. What is this doing here? <laughs> kind of, one of those, why would that gift show up now? There were like 12 of them. And I yielded, and the Holy Ghost went out in tongues real strong, and the presence shook. And then I think it was my dad back in the day that gave the interpretation, and we all hit our face. Very next weekend, it was the opposite. Someone else gave the tongue. And then the Lord bade me say this. Open your mouth and say this. To the point where it was, mm. if I didn't, I felt like I was going to strain something. <laughs> you, you, you get that, you got to do this. You ain't going to be able to get no peace till you do. That's the Spirit pressing you. And then I, I only had three words. So, and By the time I hit that third word, it just started flowing. The English was coming out of my mouth like tongues come out of my mouth. I had no idea what was coming out, but I was hearing it like I was a third person in the room listening to somebody else speak, but it was coming out of here. And for me, that was like, whoa, that's the coolest thing in the world. And that's something as simple as the gifts of tongues and interpretation. But now take that same thing and apply it to a word of knowledge the Lord might give you for somebody. Now take it and apply it to, hey, if you will get up and walk around the church, through, worship's going on, and you're worshiping, and you got mm, the Lord's all over, and you're weeping, and you feel Him talking to you and ministering to you, and you feel this unction, or you had this idea that you should get up and begin to walk around the building. Guess what you should do? Get up and walk around the building. Stop asking questions. Stop asking the follow-up questions. Because the follow-up questions are doubt. What do I do when I get out there? 
Jesus didn't ask that when he embraced his cross. What do I do when I get out? No, he expected, I'm going to die. So die and do what the Spirit is asking you to do. Uh, man, I kind of dry back here. I need to move to the front. Them people seem to be getting a touch. Why waste your time? Why be here if you're not going to get in? Why be here if you're not going to put your toe in the water? Dip your feet where the present in the Jordan so the miraculous can happen. We've got to learn to respond to the Spirit in the building, but we've got to learn to respond to the Spirit outside the building. And he goes on to say, I'm going on to the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, who's whose house joined hard to the synagogue. If it was that adjacent to the synagogue, justice was probably all leaned up against the wall hearing what was going on in the tabernacle or in the synagogue, hearing the teaching, hearing the, that there was singing. He was. And so when he heard what Paul did, when Paul steps out, he's like, ah, bring that to my house. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. What? I thought they blasphemed him. Most of them did, but he got to the chief ruler. He got to the next door neighbor. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Then spake the the, the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. <laughs> what you afraid of, son? For there are more with you than there are against you. I don't see my help. My, your help is in the hills. You're not of this world. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. The Corinthian church was born because Paul was pressed to go into the synagogue by the Spirit and teach Jesus, testify of Jesus. And he had no immediate result. Nothing went where he wanted it to go. Nothing happened the way he thought it was going to happen. And he could have left there disappointed and depressed. But instead he's like, I did what the Lord told me to do. Shook his raiment. I did what the Lord told me to do. The rest is on you. He walks out the door. The chief ruler follows. Justice, hey, come to my house. I'm telling you, if you will learn to step out of your fear, step out of your pride, step out of your place, and let the Lord lead you, we will have miracles inside and outside this building in this hour because this is what God is up to right now. We've got a people that are, have been drummed down, deadened by so much video, by video games, by Hollywood, by Hollywood Christianity, by American Christianity. There's a whole movement up there who believe they can be Christians and not have to follow the Bible. You wouldn't have known he even existed if it weren't for the Word of God. Somebody wrote it down. But there's a whole bunch of people that have been so seduced by this synthetic light, so lost in a fantasy world that they can't even live in this world. Can't hold a job, can't be responsible, got to blame everybody and everything else on their condition instead of pulling themselves up by their bootstraps and making up their mind. I'm coming out of this. Whether you help me or not, I'm going to get myself out of this. How are you going to do that? Best way for you to do it is follow Jesus. Get to his house. Find his people. Learn their ways. Don't pull them back to your ways. Learn their ways. And we, as the church, don't need to follow their ways. I don't need smokes and lights and I don't need dramas and giving away bites and selling stuff. I, I'm not trying to buy your soul. I'm trying to preach the gospel. I'm trying to get hold of the word and buy it for myself and sell it not. 
If, you, if the gospel was good enough in the days of Jesus, the gospel is good enough today. If people don't want it, they don't want it. But that's okay. You preach anyway. You witness anyway because somebody is listening. If he told you to do it, somebody wants it. And don't worry about what happens right now. There might be a justice next door. There might be a chief person in the same room and you weren't even talking to them. But the Spirit pressed you to speak and you've got to follow it and do it and let the Lord fight your battles. Let Him be victorious. Acts chapter 16. The Lord's got to do these things because our world don't know the difference between reality and fantasy anymore. Now they got goggles you can get lost in. What is going on? The enemy's trying to blur the lines of reality and fantasy. And the Lord wants to wipe out the Lines of reality and fantasy and bring you into the heavenly. <laughs> bring you into kingdom light. Bring you into king. Instead of worrying about what you see, you need to concentrate on what you feel in the spirit, not your feelings. Uh, I don't feel like going to church. That probably means you should. Well, I don't feel like praising him. That most definitely means you should. Well, I'm feeling kind of sick. I ain't really been coughing today or anything, but I'm kind of tired. I just think I'll stay in this recliner uh, level four. And the Spirit, meanwhile, is moving where you should be. And you complain the next day because you didn't get your healing, and the healing was in the house waiting on you. You got to learn to follow the Spirit. Where's He at? Where did he call his people to be? Where is he performing miracles? There are things he wants to do in his house, and then there are things he wants to do in the streets. But you can't have one without the other. Here you get educated on what to do out there. And then sometimes, school of hard knocks is you knock them doors and things happen. and They shut the door in your face. Does that mean you don't knock the next door? Just, just imagine, you knock that door and you hand them a flyer and you start talking and they just bark at you. They get really bit ugly and you handle yourself. The Spirit of God's in you. Now, I'm sorry this offends you, but I want everybody to go to heaven. Now, I'm sorry this offends you, but don't you want to go to heaven? Now, I have a Bible study I'd like to teach you right now. Can I pray with you right now? And you're like, man, I don't, I don't know if I want to go to that next door. Yeah. Meanwhile, the neighbor had pulled the curtains back, stuck their ear to the window, and they were listening to what you were telling the one that closed the door on you. And they're probably sitting there going, man, I hope he comes to my house. That sounds good to me. And here you are walking away from a door slamming, trying to decide, do I go to the next door or not? What's the Spirit say? Not your attitude, not your emotions, not your rejection. What is the Spirit? Even though I feel rejected, the Spirit tells me I need to knock one more door. Go knock the door. Stop worrying about whether they receive it or don't receive it. Just do it. Stop worrying about the outcome. We sow and we water. We're not in charge of the increase. He is. And it's the hardest for us ministry platform when it's a few. And it's the same few. And you're preaching and teaching and knocking doors. And it's the, guess what? It don't matter. Keep doing it until he gives the increase. And it don't matter if there's 5, 10, 20, or 30 of us or 3. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. Worship his mighty name. Praise him. Pray for the two. Pray for the one. Pray for each other. Just do it. (laughs) 
Acts 16, 6 through about 15, this is, a, this is the other interesting part of learning the voice of the Spirit. you got to learn when it says no. And your human compassion is like, but we should. Everything in the book says we should. We're supposed to. We're Christians. And the Spirit said, I ain't in that. Don't touch it. And you're, But we're supposed to. Watch it. Acts 16. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. Who forbade them? They were forbidden to, of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. The Holy Ghost actually forbid them to go into that neighborhood. Don't go there. But it's on the route. Don't go there. But it's the next one in line. Don't go there. After they were come to Mysia, I'm going to guess, they essayed to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. Don't go there. Don't go to Macedonia. I mean, uh, not Macedonia, but don't go to Asia. And don't go to Bithynia. But Lord, their neighborhoods in our city. Don't go there. Not today. The Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia... And prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. <laughs> and after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Paul had then learned how to follow the Spirit. If he says no, you don't go. But if he says go, you go without doubting. Surely, gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Verse 11. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to... Lord have mercy. Samothracia. Is that good enough? Sounds good. Samothracia. All right. And the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia. Philippi. Philippians. And the colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside when prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women and resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. Whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. 2 Corinthians 8 and 1 says, The churches of Macedonia. It wasn't time for Asia. It wasn't time for Brathania, whatever it was. It wasn't time for Masia, but it was time for Macedonia. And where God said go and they went, he developed church, not just one church, but churches in Macedonia. He will do the miraculous if you just follow his spirit. Don't follow tradition. Don't follow men unless the Spirit of the Lord bade you to follow. But when the Spirit says no, you don't go. We don't need to miss assignments. If Paul had been distracted to go into Asia, if he didn't listen to the Spirit and go into Mysia, what would have happened to Macedonia and all those churches being birthed? that happened to have a prayer meeting where somebody heard them, invited them in their house, whole house was baptized. And so help me God, I'm into Acts 16, Brother Leslie, and we done talked about four or five households being baptized. It don't say they was done how, but it, they were baptized in their whole house. So don't go, I'm sorry, these people want to say baptism ain't necessary. Y'all need to move on down the road or follow the book. We've got to learn to follow it. Brother Keith, come help me. I'm 
Let's stand together. So we have examples where they were obeyed by the Spirit, pressed by the Spirit, told no by the Spirit, led by the Spirit. All kinds of different ways the Spirit will lead if you're willing to follow. And most of our Christian existence, whatever part of that is, if we're blessed to be in the house of God that does follow the Spirit, thank you, Jesus. But if not, and if you're born into this thing, you've got to learn to be led of the Spirit. That's how you, that's how you are known as the sons and daughters of God. You're led of the Spirit. Say what you want to about that guy, but when the Spirit moves, he follows it. Say what you want to about that one. You want to be in service with them. They're going to touch God. Get real close. He might touch you. That's the craziest worshiping dude I've ever seen in my life. That little three step he does at Amazing Grace. But he sure get a blessing. I'll never forget. We were in church in Charlotte. And uh, Brother Peavy was his name. Good brother of mine. He's a pastor now. Been pastoring for years. And, uh, I think it's Huntsville or some, uh, near Charlotte in North Carolina. And uh, service was so so. A little bit of good worship, but it wasn't a, a tremendous blowout day. And his wife got up and they called her up and she came up to sing and everything been kind of gyrating toward fast guess what the spirit wanted guess what she did she got up there after all these fast songs and she said amazing she started singing amazing grace she didn't get to the second line brother Peavy was sitting there in that pew all of a sudden he said no got up stomping and shouting right there in the house, took off around the building, and the whole place erupted because one person followed the Holy Ghost, and then a second person followed the Holy Ghost, and then a third and a fourth and a fifth followed the Holy Ghost. Wherever the Spirit is moving, you follow it. Now, it's good to worship with your eyes closed. It helps me focus. But there's a time or two when you kind of wonder what's going on. If it ain't going on right here, where's it going on at? And if someone's broken and weeping and you can tell by the Spirit they're going, just go on. Since it ain't happening where you at, go on over there where they're broken and pray for them. And who knows, while you lay a hand on them to pray and bless them, if the Spirit don't jump on you right there and a word of prophecy come out or a word of wisdom come out or a word of knowledge come out to help that person. That's why we are in this place, to get out of ourselves and get into the Spirit of God and become everything that God desires us to be. We ought to come to church not just looking to get something, but looking to give something. I come to give you praise. I come to give you worship. And Lord, if you can use me, I'll give my brother blessings and I'll give my sister prophecy and I'll give, come on somebody. That's the way He designed us. But when we get introverted and inverted, it's all about me and what I don't have and what I need next and what I want next. You're not going anywhere. Best place, if that's you, is to find an altar and throw yourself on it and get rid of you. Sometimes there's just too much of us. And if there's too much of us, then the next thing you know, there's too much doubting. Because we can't do it in the flesh. We can't, we can't do it in our flesh. We've got to do it by the Spirit. We've got to do it by the Spirit. Look, the altar call has already taken place, and I ain't said a word. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to preach to you. You don't even have to wait for me to finish. Peter didn't even give his closing arguments, and the Spirit fell. And the people responded because they were responding to the word that was coming. He didn't need to give an altar call. The word was drawing them. And when they yielded to the word and followed the Spirit, it poured out on them and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit 
gave the utter. Come on, the altars are open. The sanctuary's open. Come on, we need to worship. We need to pray. We need to do whatever we feel we need to do in the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's follow the Spirit. Come on, let's go back to that song, Brother Keith. Let's go back where the Spirit was. My Savior, my Healer, my Deliverer. And we can worship and we can pray. But ultimately, empty yourself out and begin to follow the Spirit of God. Praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, it's to our God. Glory, hallelujah, it's to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. Yes, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, my God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, you are, yes, you are, God, my Because you did crazy stuff. When nobody else was doing it, you decided you're going to do it. When nobody else would preach, you decided to preach. When nobody else would witness, you decided to witness. When nobody else was talking about Jesus, you brought him up. And there's crazy stuff and moves of the Spirit that go on in the building. But if there's a whisper in your spirit of doing anything to come out of your place, please... Obey the Holy Ghost and come out of your place because somebody may be waiting on you to move so they can be moved. We gotta move by the Spirit. Oh, yada Why does Brother Palmer do that? Why does Brother Palmer do this? And why that don't even make sense? What's that about? I'm just trying my best to follow the ark. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to do my best to bear the ark. Wherever it's shifting and moving, I want to go where it is. And if it goes beyond tradition, I'm going to go. That's why sometimes I preach stuff and there's guests here and y'all are like, why is he preaching that? Because I'm echoing what I heard the Spirit say and I'm not worried about the result thank God in that moment I was full of the Holy Ghost and I wasn't worried about the result so I said it now afterwards when whatever happens goes down I might be back there going why did I say that what was I thinking but I know because I'm doing my best to follow the Spirit. Do you think the Lord is going to be met more angry with you if you follow Him best you can and stumble a toe and make a scene? Then you just sit there and Him push you and push you and prod you and poke you and you just... It's not really my calling, it's not Jesus. Who's He going to be more pleased with? They were singing that song closer and that was lining up with where I was going. We can't get, you, I don't care who you are. You can't get past the scripture that says, Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. It doesn't say I'm going to come thump you on your, not your hard headed noggin, and then you get up and follow me. He said, Draw, you do something out of the ordinary to reach for me, and I 
promise you, I'm going to come to where you are. Over and over again, he's done it. Over and over. So what if you're the, and I don't mean so what, but if you're the only one in your house willing to do it, do it. Eventually, eventually, they're going to respond. One way or the other. And and I'm going to say it like Brother Morgan said a little while ago. When we witness, it is a two-edged sword. When we teach and preach, it's a two-edged sword. On the one hand, it's going forth to save those who desire to be saved. But on the other hand, it's judging those who don't want it. Aren't you glad you don't get to decide who does and doesn't want it? But if you're going to follow the Holy Ghost, you've got to declare it and say it and live it and let the chips fall where they're going to fall. Let the tree land wherever it's going to fall. Just follow the Spirit. Follow the Spirit. And if you feel like it's leading you somewhere that ain't somewhere in this book, I would beg for you to try that spirit. Because the scripture does says, try the spirits, whether they be of God or not. And the spirit's not going to ask you to do anything that's not in that book. So as much as I want to say, follow it, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, try it. Make sure it's God. Don't start preaching about angel dust in here. Y'all know, y'all might want to move down the street. I haven't read about no angel. Anybody read angel dust in here? I haven't seen no angel. Y'all seen any angel feathers in the Bible? I hadn't seen no angel feathers in the Bible. I don't even know that they're feathers. And I really, I, I hadn't seen no female angels in here neither. I'm just, I, I'm just saying. I ain't seen no little cupids. I hadn't seen no cupids in here neither. I, I, I didn't find it. It's good to get in here because you might follow anything if you don't have a road map. Amen. I love y'all. Is that a good message? That's a good word from the Lord. Wherever I'm at moving, just follow me. Yes, sir. I'm coming. That's what we, yes, sir, I'm coming. That's what we're going to do. And one by one, he's going to start adding. And then he's going to multiply. And I don't care what it looks like right now. He said it. I believe it. So I don't care if there's three of you here, or 20, or 50, or 100. I'm still going to preach the same way. I'm going to say what he's saying. And I hope the musicians play the same way and sing the same way. And I hope those that are worshiping worship the same. And it doesn't matter how many's here. He's still working.